Hey, hey, what's going on, world? This is Kay Williams for Can Chronicles Media. Got an interview this afternoon with champion Logan Storley, who recently defeated Michael MVP Page in Bellator 281 welterweight division. To many, it might not might not have been, excuse me, the most exciting match, but it was a match full of skill, patience, and execution. We're gonna go ahead and bring them right on in. Hey, Spawn. champ, how's it going, man? How are you? Not too bad. Just got done with practice and uh, back home. Right on, just kind of unwinding. Yeah, just uh, you know, kind of. I took a few few weeks being back in South Dakota, being back with my friends and family. Um, it was a long couple months of back to back fights, and uh, so I kind of got to go home and enjoy it a little bit. And now, uh, now we're back in Florida and getting ready for whatever's next. Talk about whatever's next, man. Um, it was a great fight. Um, it was a fight full of execution, a fight full of skill. And we're going to talk about that later on down the interview. So what is considered downtime for the champ these days? Um, I guess for me, I did some wrestling camps. Uh, wrestling is my first love. So I did a lot of camps back in South Dakota. Um, spent time at the lake and, you know, things like that, that when you're in Florida, you know, I'm a, I don't have any family down here. Most of my friends are all back in the Midwest between Minnesota and South Dakota. So I just really kind of just relaxing and, and being away from the sport for a little bit. I need it for my mental state of, I like to come back when I'm, when I'm, uh, when I take a little time off, I feel like I get a little more creative, um, you know, with training and sparring. Cause you just, you watch some fights and you take that break, and um, I think you kind of forget how hard it is, too. You know, you take two, two absolutely. Weeks. And but it's it's good to watch things and then come back and and try some different things. And so I needed that. So many would say, let's talk about the match, man. So many would say it wasn't the most quote unquote exciting match, right? So how do you feel about those who think that way, from your perspective? I don't know. Go anybody sit, uh, in that position that I understand it's entertainment. I know that they spent their hard-earned dollars and I appreciate the hell out of that. I'm not, I'm not taking that away, but that was an opportunity for me to become champion financially, make a lot more money. So I had to do whatever, whatever it took to take care of me and my family. So if anybody else is in that situation, they're going to do the same thing. And anyone that says not, you know, I'm going to take a harder route or maybe where it's 50, 50, or maybe it leans more in his favorite. Why would I ever do that? You know, I've spent 25 years becoming the best I can at, in maybe 20 years of wrestling. You know, I'm a lot better there. So what if I like to stand up a little more with him? Sure. But I spent a decent amount of time on my feet and he never, he never hurt me, you know? So, so don't, I, I guess some people that were coming at me, it's like, I gave him almost the whole fourth round, you know, maybe he hit an elbow or two, but he never hurt me, never dropped me. Um, and we've seen what he's done to everyone else when they've stood with him. And how many times he dropped Lima in the second fight, what, two times, three times in the first round. So um, for me, it was doing whatever I had to, to become the champion. And then um, once I kind of felt those positions and I felt his speed, it was like, okay, I I'm much better here. You know, just what was it? Two, three months before that, me and Gracie stood up for five rounds and, there wasn't one takedown. So, you know, um, I, this is a sport where you have to use your brain and pick the spots. You know, if, if he, someone's really good somewhere and that's not your spot, then, you know, that's, that's just being silly. That's not being, that's not being a well, uh, I guess, well-educated fighter. So you find your angles, you find your spots where you're good at, um, and then you take them. And so I guess for me, it just comes back to, everyone that gets in this sport is to become, you want to be the best in the world. And that was my moment to be the best in the world. And, you know, when I left that, uh, when I left that arena, I had the belt. You did. And you know what, Storley, um, it's interesting that you say that because anybody who ever studied you, they would know that wrestling is a pivotal part of your fight arsenal, right? So going into it, I didn't expect anything less i didn't underrate anything but i knew that you would go with primarily what your strong what your strong suit was excuse me um do you feel that 
that was more of a main focus that led to your defeat and MVP? Um, yeah, you know, we watched a lot of things. What he does really well is he makes people circle um, to the left. I think he circles them to the left. We went to the right. And you can't – he's so long and his feet move so fast that if you reach and get extended on a jab or a right hand, that's when he counters you. And so we knew that if we were going to uh, – if we're going to go in with punches that we had to be all the way in or all the way out. And that's just having a great team, a world-class team around me with Henry Hooft, Robbie Lawler, Jason Strout, Kami Barzini, Greg Jones, those guys put together, you know, what I needed to do to get this done. And um, it was being disciplined and circling to the right, all the way in or all the way out. And then once you got to your position, you know, of course I wish I would have done more damage when I got to those positions, but he did a great job and he didn't want to scramble either there. You know, he didn't try to really get up. He, he kind of held those positions. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, he's a hell of a competitor and he's the f- one of, he's the fastest guy I've ever felt in all, in any sport, you know, in wrestling, I've, I've wrestled the best of the best, but how fast he moved, you know, I've never felt that. And so um, it was, uh, it's, it's hard to touch him. It's hard to kind of get a rhythm. Do you feel that your stand-up game, in fact, goes a little underrated in the eyes of your peers? Yeah, I mean, I think the Gracie fight, sh- you know, kind of came out and showed that, you know, when I landed 200, you know, significant strikes, I thought I picked him apart. For the most part, he did hit me. I took that punch came back and dropped him. Um, but this is a sport of a quarter of a second or, you know, your hand being um, by your chin or by your ear compared to, you know, dropping it here and you're knocked out. With a four-ounce glove, That there's the, the margin of error is so small. That's why really hardly anybody, what, Khabib, is the only one that's gotten out of this undefeated. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like there's just the, the margin of error is so small. And so um, this is a this is a short career for a lot of us. You know, we're not going to get to do this forever. And you want to have longevity and you want to be in exciting fights, which, you know, me and Amasov was exciting. Me and Gracie was an exciting fight. Those are two, you know, top, top class guys. But when it comes to a fight of taking taking control and, and being smart, you have to do that as well. I agree there. I agree. Got to be well executed and mental, mentally prepared. Let's talk about the mental preparation because we know that MVP, you know, he likes to talk a lot, man, and he definitely likes to talk. How did you go about this fight um, mentally preparing for it, uh, knowing that he was going to be an attraction because he likes to talk a lot? Yeah, um, I guess for me, I was pretty confident because I just came off that Gracie fight, and that was just a huge step for me to let my hands go five rounds, getting hurt, um, coming back and just throwing everything I had and, and not relying on my wrestling, really my defense of wrestling that fight. Um, so I was confident. I'd just been in the cage, what 10 or whatever it was, 14 weeks before that in a main event. And so I was really confident walking in there. Um, and I knew people were going to boo. I knew that regardless, even if it would have been a wild fight, they're going to boo if I win, they, they, right. you know, and I get it. That's your guy from your country. You know, if it's in, if it's in back in Sioux Falls, everyone's going to, you know, hate on MVP no matter what he did. And that's right. And, you know, when with favorites and guys that are fan favorites, you know, people always are going to love them. No, you know, and hate the guy they're fighting. So, um, but no, I was ready. And, and I've been in a lot of big moments wrestling. And so I knew, I knew how to, I knew how to, comp- I know how to compete at the highest level and I've proved it over and over again. Um, but really for me, it was just, I really wanted to, I wanted to become champ. And if that moment would have passed, it's hard to get back to that spot. And so I had to do everything in my, you know, everything that I could to, to bring it home with me and, and kind of get that first check mark um, done. Before the fight started, man, um, I was kind of watching your demeanor, and it's almost like you had, you expected to be booed, like you were mentally prepared for that. It didn't phase you one bit. 
Yeah, you know, I saw, um, you know, I know he's a big draw, and, he, and and it's in London. That's his town, you know. That's where, uh, you know, I've never been over there, so I didn't expect to have many uh, many fans over there. And um, at the end of the day, once that cage door shuts, I have to do whatever, whatever I can to um, win that fight, you know. And sometimes people get – the crowd starts to get to him a little bit and you know, we've all been there where the crowd is booing and it's like, okay, let's make this a little more exciting or, or rush to a spot. Uh, but this one, there was so much on the line that, you know, it was 25 minutes of focus. As far as difficulty, um, where do you rank this as far as the more difficult fights in your career thus far? Um, it was, uh, just that, like I said, that timing and length, is really hard to you can't really emulate it once you get in there you know you got thirteen thousand people pretty much booing at you and you got a title on the line and you know you got just the pressure and this and that and everything else of competing you know um i felt you know just his distance and him being able to slide in and slide out and being able to explode was much different than watching it on film. You know, when you watch time. It, yeah, when you watch it on film, it's like, okay, I think I can get there. I can get there. Why isn't a guy doing that? Um, and with with him, it was like, okay, now I understand is that he slides in and out so well. Um, obviously, once I got to him, you know, got a hold of him, I'm much better there. That's my, you know, so that wasn't a surprise at all. Um, but I was I was impressed with his ability to to stay long. I knew his grip was good, um, but yeah, I would say, you know, him, Amosov, Gracie, MVP. You know, those are my three of my toughest battles, and they all presented different things. And um, so I don't, you know, those three are my top three, obviously. Um, but uh, this one was just different because you had to be careful with when you, those knees, you know, when I was sitting in the locker room, they're showing all the MVP highlights of him <laughs> crushing cyborg, knocking these guys yeah. out, right hands, dropping people. And it's like, okay, like this guy's real, you know, and, and this not real, this guy's that dangerous, you know, and, and, and it, it is that dangerous a fight. Whereas if that knee does hit you, like, We're are, going you down. are you going to be the same fighter like ever again? Like there's, so there's a lot of things that were, you know, run through your head right before you're going to go compete and fight another human being in front of, you know, worldwide stage. So, um, but once I got, you know, once we got into their um, second, mid second, I knew my positions and, and kind of had my, had his little tells and, you know, I'm sure he knew certain things as well. And um, so, but, you know, obviously it was a tough fight. How did you adjust to the height difference? I think with your five, Eight five nine. He's a what six two six three. It's a big height yeah. difference. How'd you adjust to that? Um, inside, all the way in or all the way out. All the way in or all the way out. Um, and so for me, it was once again take away that height is get in close, get in close. Um, I would have liked to make it more of a brawl in close, but he doesn't let that happen. He, you know, he he gets all the way out real fast. And then we'll explode in. So I wanted to be on the outside. So I, I'm really intrigued to see what will happen with him and Mike Perry and bare knuckle, you know, uh, in that bare knuckle fight. Um, obviously, I think it's hitting is going to be different, you know. Like, Absolutely. And so I don't know, like, MVP has really big hands. Um, but Mike Perry cracks. And it's I think the cage or what the ring is smaller. So... I don't know how that distance, you know, every, if you slide in and you keep hitting that ring, that might totally change, you know, MVP's distance and timing. Um, but yeah, I would have liked to, you know, be more inside and make it a little more, uh, you know, more of a brawl in there. But uh, at the end of the day, it worked out. That's the way the fight worked out. And, and um, you know, much props to him for being, you know, so elusive on his feet. Um, but at the same time, it's, I took all that away and, you know, I've done that against the best guys in the world and, and, um, continuing to prove that, you know, it's that, that's why I'm the best. 
Who are you interested in fighting next? Like, who's on Storley's radar? I think um, I think Amasov. You know, I think Amasov. Obviously, I, I I'm not sure what's going on um, with. Uh, I saw he was back in the gym, and so, you know, if he's able to train, do a do a real training camp, then then I would love to fight Amasov. Um, if not. You know, you have Lima and Jason Jackson. Jason Jackson is a teammate of mine, a friend of mine. Um, so that's a tough spot, you know. I I don't know how we go about that at Sanford or, you know, now we're Killcliffe um, FC. Um, I'm not sure, you know, how that all works out because we've seen it before. Um, you know, we had Gilbert and Kamaru and we've seen it in other gyms, Rashad and John, you know. Um, it's a tough thing. It's not just a – it's not like a – it's not a wrestling match. It's not a basketball game, you know, like this is a fight with, you know, financial things on the line plus our health. Um, and so obviously uh, you never want to fight a teammate and, you know, I don't want to fight my teammate. Um, but if Jason wins next weekend, I don't know what else is, you know, what else is kind of left for either of us. You know, he wants to be a champ and I want to continue to defend this. But uh, I don't know. We'll see what Bellator, see what Bellator does, and what they offer, and if Amasov's ready, and um, how that fight plays out between Jason and, and Lima. So nonetheless, um, what can the Storley support base expect from you in the near future? I think they can, you know, expect to see me get back in there. I want to stay active, but I. I I'm continuing to improve, and I think that I think that people have saw that from my August fight, which was, you know, not my best fight by any means, and I was not happy with that. Um, and then I make that jump to Gracie was ranked number three or four, and then you you know become champ. So that's a big that's a big jump, and I think I'm going to continue to make those jumps, and um, you know I think I'm in the prime of my career. You have a short window of a few years here. You know, that maybe that 32, 33 is kind of the end of it, um, I think is kind of what we, for some guys, I guess. Um, and so it's a, it's going to be a hard push. I want to, I want to make that jump, continue to make that jump, be the best in the world, pound for pound list. Um, but in order to do that is it, you got to continue to improve, continue to get better. And uh, in a sport like this where anything can happen, you got to stay focused and, and continue to put the work in. Absolutely, man. Um, well, thank you for your time, champ. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. Um, I'll continue to track your career and uh, best wishes and endeavors moving on to the future. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate it. You. Yeah. All right. Take care. So. Take care. See ya. Thank you.